In this video we're going to be taking this robotic tracked vehicle that I made several weeks ago and we're going to be driving it around using vision recognition using a deep learning model, a neural network basically, built on NVIDIA Jetson Nano. So we built this a few weeks ago and it's got brushless motors in and radio controlled car ESCs. It's pretty robust and it's pretty fast, but first of all we need to slow it down a bit. I've modified the design to add all these yellow parts and those are going to hold some gearhead motors with worm gear gearboxes on, a 24 volt battery in the back instead of a 12 volt battery, somewhere to put our Jetson Nano, the camera and also some different motor drivers. So let's get those parts printed and get it reassembled. And thanks to 3D Fuel for providing the filament for this project, check out 3dfuel.com. I've got my two much more substantial geared motors, they're lower power than the brushless ones but obviously they're geared down much more with these worm gear gearboxes so we should get much more torque at low speed and more precise motions. These are 24 volt gearboxes from Gimson Robotics. I've also got two motor drivers which are the BTS 7960s and I've also got the mount for the camera and the mount for the electronics. So I've removed the brushless motors and put on the DC motors there and each one's just got a belt drive that goes down to the existing tracks. This block is going hold the camera on the front, it's a bit big and crude but it slots on there as a slot for the cable to go in and we're probably going to use a Raspberry Pi version 2 camera stuck on here somewhere wherever it needs to be which is compatible with the Jetson Nano. Around the back the place where the motor drivers was is still for the motor drivers but now we've got these IBT2 drivers which are going to drive the two DC motors and we've still got space for the battery here. We did have this platform which had an Arduino Nano on and the radio control receiver and I've just made a slightly bigger platform which fits right there and that's going to hold the Jetson Nano and associated items. So my Jetson Nano is mounted on the back there and that is actually a 5 volt device so we've got a 24 volt battery here, we'll eventually need to have a 5 volt regulator to power that. For now we're going to run it off the mains adapter, we have got one of these 10 amp 5 volt adapters which is going to go on the back here so we can power it off the battery. You'll notice there's a white cable here coming off and that's to go to the camera. So that's the Raspberry Pi version 2 camera mounted on the front. I left a slot there to take that cable through and that's as I say is compatible with the Jetson Nano. So now it's time to train a machine learning model so that we can look through that camera, recognize objects and make the robot navigate. So for now I've just plugged the Jetson Nano into a monitor keyboard and mouse. I'm just powering it from the mains adapter while we sort all of that out. Now I've previously demoed some of the Hello AI World demos from Nvidia which are provided with with ready trained machine learning networks which are essentially neural networks that can recognize objects and that's really simple to do the documentation is really good you have to build the project from source but everything works fine and then there's some pre-made networks and some example code you can run that will recognize household objects like fridges and TVs, the keyboard and mouse on this desk, people and things like that. So check back on that previous video for the short demo. So we're going to go and use one of those networks, but instead of training a whole neural network from scratch, which takes many, many hundreds of hours on a high power GPU, we're going to do something called transfer learning. And that allows us to take an existing neural network that already knows how to recognize images and just feed it some new images to recognize instead. And that uses all the weightings from the original network and everything it already knows about recognizing images. And it makes that training process much quicker. But before we look at that, it's a quick ad from the video sponsor, and that is PCBWay. PCBWay provides both PC manufacture and PCB assembly under the same roof, so you can get them to solder the components on your PCB as well as make the board itself. As well as standard fiberglass PCBs, PCBWay can manufacture aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs and rigid flex PCBs which are part rigid and part flexible. Prices start at just $5 for 10 standard PCBs or $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly but new customers can get $5 credit and that means you can get your first 10 PCBs for free. PCBWay also offer advanced services such as PCB design, x-ray inspection, electronic probe inspection, impedance control and various certification capabilities 
agencies, including ROHS and UL certification. Get your first 10 PCBs for free now at PCBWay.com, and I've put that link in the description to this video as well. Right, let's get back to that deep learning model. So if we wanted to train the neural network to recognize people or animals, that's gonna take many thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of different images, because every person looks slightly different. They'll be posed slightly differently. Some people are sitting down, standing up, objects obscuring them. Obviously dogs look different depending on what breed it is and so on. So we need a massive data set. So to make it easy on myself, I'm gonna train it on something which never looks any different. I'm gonna retrain the neural network using transfer learning to recognize these three shapes, which are really high contrast, a triangle, a circle, and a square. And they never look any different. So hopefully we don't need very many items in our data set and it won't take very long. So basically this is pretty much guaranteed to work. And that's one of the reasons I'm putting it in this video so I can complete it, but also shows how easy it is and sort of gives you an idea of what data you need for training different data sets. NVIDIA have provided some really good documentation and some useful tools and scripts to complete the process. I'm following the instructions for transfer learning for the SSD mobile net network. After creating the folder for your model with a text file in containing the label names, which are basically the categories of object you want to recognize, it's time to use the camera capture tool provided by NVIDIA to capture the images and label them. I use the same camera I'm using for the actual image recognition once the model is trained, because that seems sensible, and I also have it at the same sort of height it's mounted on the robot. This probably isn't necessary, but it seemed like a good idea to get the best results. I captured and labeled around 70 images of the markers, some with one marker in shot, some with two or three. This is a pretty small data set, but there isn't much variation in the shape and size of the markers. After that, it's time to use the train SSD Python script to train the model. This only took about 10 or 15 minutes with this simple data set on the Jetson Nano. The model then needs exporting to ONNX format, and then we can use the DetectNet example code to run the model. There are quite a few command line options here which are necessary, but this is well documented. And now we should find that it detects those shapes pretty well. It's pretty responsive, we're getting about 40 frames a second. So some of them will work if we turn them sideways and some of them won't until they look like a triangle again because obviously I only train them in one orientation. The square's a bit easier because it becomes a square again and of course the circle works any way we like because it's always a circle so that's a consideration but otherwise it's pretty accurate and it's pretty quick for that small amount of training data. So I'm pretty happy with that and you'll notice in the terminal to one side it's actually telling us what the shape is and it's also telling us the coordinates, so that's the width and height and the center. And that's because I've basically hacked the code to put some if statements in to pull those things out of the class so that we can now track the object pretty quickly within the field of view. So I'm pretty happy of how that's working. I'm really happy of how easy that was to train and how well it works, but obviously I am using really simplistic high contrast markers that always look the same. If we were training on household objects like the keyboard and mouse example, or chairs or tables or people or dogs, those things don't always look the same. So we need many more thousands of images to train on so the neural network can learn what they typically look like. If we're doing a more niche example though, like a factory production line with items coming down a conveyor belt and we only had two or three products, provided we train them in different orientations, then we probably could get away with a similarly small amount of data. Now we're using the Jetson Nano and it's running at about 40 frames a second with that example. NVIDIA have sent me the Xavier NX development kit as well, which I'll be using in some other projects, and that's massively more powerful. So that runs over 100 frames a second with a similar example. However, I'm pretty sure we're not maxing the Xavier out on that. We're probably maxing out the bandwidth of the camera or something else. So we could probably run that in parallel multiple times at a similar speed. So this has opened up a lot of possibilities for projects doing much more complicated image recognition, perhaps gesture recognition, and lots of other objects that we could use in projects. And it would be that simple to train pretty much with a few hundred images. But for now, we're just gonna drive this tank around looking at these markers. So let's have a look at how we can interface to the motors. Our Jetson Nano has a very familiar looking 40 pin GPIO header. And this is exactly the same pinouts as the Raspberry Pi. And it also appears to use the same library for Python at least to access those pins. So it's not gonna be too hard to activate our motors using the motor drivers we installed in some Python script. I've done quite a bit of wiring. We've got that five volt 10 amp regulator on there providing five volts to the Jetson Nano. That's really important. Don't run your Jetson Nano from 24 volts because it won't do it any good. We've got 
a breakout here for 0 and 5 volts that come off the GPIO header, and the motor drivers actually need 0 and 5 volts and the enable pin taking to 5 volts so they work. So that's what all these pins are on the 5 volt side. Obviously we've got ground connected, and then we've got two channels on each motor driver going to two GPIO pins on the Nano, and that's going to actually make the motors go backwards and forwards. Now there's only two PWM channels on the Jetson Nano, so we're not using those, we're just using digitals, but the motors are pretty slow anyway, so they just go full speed, and that's fine for our purposes. I've written some really basic code that just brings those GPIO pins high and low depending on which image it sees, so basically which category it is. So a square makes it stop, so we'll leave that there, and the triangle makes it go. And that's really just to test out my motors and check I've got everything wired correctly, and that basically the algorithm that recognizes the images is giving me data, my if statements work, and then I can actually control the wheels. But we want to make something a bit more complicated than that. So I've made a really basic state machine using a bunch of if statements and flags so that the robot goes and looks for the markers one at a time. First of all, the triangle, and basically it turns to the left till it sees the next one, then the square, then it will drive towards it until it gets a certain size. So it's actually looking at the width of that marker. It's very useful that the markers are all the same size, of course, and then it will go and stop and look for the next one. All it does is waits until the next marker is in the middle of the field of view within certain bounds and then it will drive forward until it's a certain size. So it's pretty simplistic, it doesn't do anything about homing in on the target as it's driving towards it. Eventually it goes back to the beginning and looks for the triangle again and that will just carry on forever until I stop it. Sometimes I get this double detection where it detects two objects the same on top of each other and I'm not sure why that is but it might be lack of training data and sometimes also the circle turns into a triangle and I've really no idea why that is because it's clearly a circle but again that's probably down to the minimal data set that I used. Obviously we're not really taking advantage of the speed of the Jetson Nano, we've got 40 frames a second there for the image recognition but the robot's going much slower due to the gear ratio. Now there is an autonomous radio control car racing league where they actually go shooting round a track autonomously, mostly using Jetson Nanos. And they do that training by driving around the track manually, seeing what the steering and accelerator is doing, and comparing that with what the track looks like, putting that into a deep learning model, and then running it around autonomously, and those cars go much faster, so it just goes to show what can be done there. There is also a reference design called the JetBot, which is specifically designed for the Jetson Nano, and that's another differential drive robot, which has lots of examples on the SD card image for that which will make it do lots of things with vision recognition. But I'm really happy of how easy it was to train. We probably could do with more training data with these markers on different backgrounds so my circle doesn't turn into a triangle sometimes. I only really trained it on this table and on the floor down there with 70 images. So it's pretty reliable though and I'm really happy of how quick it tracks for just that small amount of data and we still get 40 frames a second and over 100 on the Xavier NX. So there's a lot of possibilities in other projects. I really want to do something with gesture recognition next to do something more complicated that will recognize my hand gestures to control something. So that's coming up in the future. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. All right, that's all for now.